Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I do simple medicine. That means that I'm not heavy on statistics. I can't necessarily fully understand everything about it. It can be quite complicated. But I just see what's in front of me and ask simple scientific questions. And so when I was seeing research coming out saying that the COVID vaccine was protective against cardiovascular events, being a simple person, it made no sense. I thought, well, we know it causes myocarditis. That alone should make it that at best you can have equivalence or just a little bit worse, but to be better, it made no sense to me. And so I had to sit down and think carefully about this latest bit of research. And this is a paper that came out of Florida in the USA. And guess what they did? They compared the vaccines, Pfizer versus Moderna. Now, you have to be clear, here you have Joseph Ladapo. He is the um, Florida Surgeon General, and he has been challenging the narrative. So you can expect to know where this is likely to be going. We'll come back to that in just a second. So I'll be going into just some simple thoughts about what the paper says. It's a preprint and what my thoughts are in relation to what it means. Before I start, as usual, I'll mention that coming up shortly is our conference. One of the few conferences we've not had one for some time, Saturday the 35th of May, uh, 31st of May, 2025. And uh, please, you can register for free at Eventbrite. We are very appreciative of your support. So look out for that link in the description. Let's come back to this question about what it is that the Surgeon General did. And, and to be frank with you, I can't figure out why this wasn't done before. Maybe they didn't want to know the results. But here is what he did. He put together essentially two groups, two cohorts of, um, of patients, and he did it specifically looking at them being matched across from the perspective of their vaccination status. And they were looking at a specific time frame. I'll show you here what they did, the study population. So they looked at Florida residents, non-institutionalized, so uh, not in a care home or anything, between 18 to 99 years, they had to have at least two doses of the vaccine less than six weeks apart. And it could either be the Pfizer BNT162B2 or the Moderna mRNA 1273. And they were looking at it between December 2020 and August 2021. And they got a significant number. This is almost, uh, it's a one-to-one -one match ratio. Um, and they match them according to age, sex, race, eth ethnicity, vaccination sites, and types of vaccinations, the month of the vaccination. So they did quite a clear matched cohort. Your logical expectation would be that both of these vaccines are pretty similar. They both encode the spike protein. They have slight differences in terms of their carrier lipid nanoparticle but they should be about the same. So what did the study show? And this is where it gets very, very interesting. And you then have to think, wait, this, this is important. How in the world did this not get done before? Now, the match cohort was 1.4 million non-institutionalized Florida residents. So this is a big study. And they were looking at the all cause cardiovascular, COVID-19, and non-COVID mortality within 12 months after their second COVID dose, all right? Um, and so the results there, generally, when they compared them, they found that compared mRNA-1273 recipients compared to the Pfizer BN162B2 recipients had a significantly higher risk for all-cause mortality. That makes no sense on the surface of it. They are technically the similar, very similar vaccines. 
why in the world would there be a difference in mortality outcomes? And it raises an important question. Therefore, when we were told that there were cardioprotective effects of the vaccine, was that correct? And it made no sense to me at the time. I'm thinking, well, if you say there are cardioprotective effects, you have to tell me the mechanism because we all know that they can all cause myocarditis. So how is it protecting the heart? Now, here's an important point, and I want you to consider this here. I have done a whole course. There's a link in the description specifically looking at abnormal patterns in heart physiology after vaccination. And it's 12 modules, you know, lots of uh, physiology in it, um, talking about what we were looking at, the characteristics. But essentially, I put all of that together because of a very important, and again, the Japanese, Japanese study. And what they did at the time was that they were looking at the uptake of glucose in the heart of vaccinated versus unvaccinated patients. This study then demonstrates that in the vaccinated cohort, you have a significant change where there is high glucose uptake in the heart of the vaccinated cohort. This is a comparison where dark means high glucose uptake in the vaccinated. This is not normal. And so when I hear about cardioprotection, when I see physiologically that the heart is operating differently for up to six months after vaccination, it made no sense. And so therefore, what we are starting to see now in terms of the study coming out of um, Florida, now it's starting to make sense. So here are a few thoughts that I will capture with regards to putting this together. And I again, I went through the, the paper and um, I looked at certain characteristics that make sense in terms of what potentially could explain this very strange pattern. The first thing is that what are the differences? The Pfizer vaccine, the mRNA dose is 30 micrograms compared to Moderna, which is 100. Now, Moderna chose to use a higher amount of mRNA because they wanted a stronger response. Pfizer, for whatever reason, uses a lower dose. The interval is about similar, 21 versus 28 days. But here's an interesting fact. IgG4 induction, as we've always talked about, was higher after the third dose of the Pfizer vaccine versus Moderna. So there is something clearly different between the two. And I would have expected it would have been a higher IgG4 after Moderna, but no, it's a lower response to IgG4. Storage, um, side effects, again, probably because of dosing, mild to moderate with Pfizer, stronger after the second dose with Moderna, it's simply because I think they use a higher dose. Both the antibody durability is short-lived, slightly longer with Moderna. So they are very similar, as I said, vaccines. They both use mRNA technology. They both use the lipid nanoparticle platform to deliver it, slightly higher dose with Moderna. I would have thought, because of that, that it would be a higher risk for complications. Here are the outcomes. And the outcomes, when we look across the categories here, in terms of all cause deaths per 100,000 people, for Pfizer, was 847.2 per 100,000, compared to Moderna, 617.9, a 229 per 100,000 difference. That, even though it appears small, is actually quite significant. And then when it is broken down further in terms of cardiovascular, it's 248.7 versus 162. Why in the world would you have a higher cardiovascular risk with the Pfizer vaccine than Moderna? What they did was also very interesting. They also added in suicide or homicide. And the reason why they did that was to demonstrate that the cohorts were matched. And you know they were matched because this is about similar. So 
12.7, the 11.4. That's the kind of pattern you should have expected with all of these things. COVID deaths, higher with Pfizer. Non-COVID deaths, higher with Pfizer. This all doesn't seem to quite add up. What is going on? So in effect, this is where I'm saying that the more we pull back on the data, and as I said, I remember those studies coming out at the incredible protection against heart, against thrombosis, and I was thinking, that makes no sense. We know this is pro-thrombotic. How could it protect against thrombosis? Was something wrong with the data in the first place? I don't know. So further breakdown in terms of the non-COVID deaths, it's again for Pfizer 791.6 versus 588.4. So it's a significant difference between them. Again, cardiovascular 248.7162. And something is different here. And I am genuinely not sure what it is. Is it the IgG4? Because that's one of the clear differences between the two that the Pfizer tends to trigger more of an IgG4 response than Moderna. Could that be part of the picture? We don't know. But without a shadow of a doubt, this needs a lot more research. In summary on it, you have the fact that both vaccines seem to carry cardiovascular risk. But Pfizer appears to have a higher risk than Moderna. This is very similar to what seemed to happen with AstraZeneca versus the mRNA vaccines. And so it's shifting us thinking that it's not so much that one is protective, it's just that neither may be cardioprotective in the long term. Vascular risk, particularly after multiple doses. And although Moderna appears safer, it doesn't mean that it is safe. These are pretty serious details. And as I said, I come back to the paper and remind you that it is a preprint. You're going to have a lot of talk about the fact that um, this is not yet uh, clearly evidenced and, uh, and so on. The point is, is that if they are not exactly matched, you then have to question, what is the mechanism? Why is that the case? This is the breakdown, as they said. All cause deaths were blue represents Pfizer, red represents Moderna. You can see it's it's higher with the Pfizer, cardiovascular deaths higher, non-COVID deaths higher, COVID deaths higher. Something is not right. Whether or not it's down to the dosing, whether or not it's down to IgG4, it is not clear, but it needs to be explained. And it's again one of those gaps that in effect, should have been looked at before. And this is what I'm finding more and more as we go through the pandemic, is that there are significant problems when it comes to looking for answers. The science does seem as though it's compromised because there are some questions that really don't want to be asked. In summary here in the discussion, it says the findings demonstrate that vaccination with the Pfizer BNT162B2 was associated with higher 12-month all-cause cardiovascular COVID and non-COVID mortality compared to the Moderna mRNA-1273. Um, what else are we going to find out when the research is actually done? These are the problems that we are facing at the moment. And so at this point, I mean, at this point, what do we do? We just need to try and get answers. As I said, I remind you, coming up is our conference, Hidden Drivers for Post-COVID Dysfunction. This is becoming more and more relevant, mitochondria, microclots, and microbiome imbalance. We really need to understand what is going on. And as well, if you want to learn more about the kind of changes that are occurring in the heart, please take a look at this course, Vaccine-Induced Abnormal Heart Physiology fascinating information about how the heart works and some of the potential mechanisms that could explain why we're seeing these patterns. There's still a lot of work to do and we still have to figure out what the implications are at population level. I expect us to still have problems in the future.
But my hope has always been, if we understand, there's a chance to mitigate. If we ignore, we're leaving things to just end up the way that they can, and that's rarely ever anyone's benefit. Have a great evening.